In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. You are listening to uh, In the Trenches podcast with Mr. Michael Bruce, uh, original guitarist of Alice Cooper Band. Uh, we are talking some old school stuff, but now we are going to move on to some new school stuff. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we like to talk about equipment. We like to talk about guitars because this is sort of a music driven based uh, podcast. I have, have a little section called um, The One That Got Away. All right. This is the one that got away. And we're, because you're a guitarist, because you played through all these different amps, and all these different guitars through the years, do you have a, an actual instrument, amplifier, effect, anything that you had to sell or got stolen or got rid of over the years? Is there anything that uh, you feel that's the one that got away? And please tell that story. Well, uh, fast forward. We're now on the road, probably doing schools out, I guess, right? I'm talking about a time when a Marshall amp did not have a master volume control. I ran into this guy in New York City who says, I can put a distortion circuitry in your Marshall amp. And I said, oh, okay, all right. So he puts it in and man, it is just wonderful. You know, you can't buy this. So fast forward, we're now out on the road playing our little hearts out and uh, something happened to that amp. Uh, you know, something burned out in it, whatnot. So we take it to a local repair place. And uh, when, you get the, when I go and get the head back, he goes, oh, by the way, I found some other circuitry in there that, so I took it all out and fixed it. It's back to, and I went, what? So I lunged at him to choke him because he's now taken that circuitry out of there and now I have your, no your entire modification of yes, the amp. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, Oh God. So I, <laughs> what can I do? You know, so that, that amp wise, that was that Marshall pre, I don't know what year that was when they went to the master volume game, master volume game. So okay. amplifier wise, that was that story. The other one was, uh, when we were out on the road, I found this Les Paul Jr. single coil uh, P P P90, P90, and uh, it's a 58. I think it was a 58. And uh, I, I I did a lot of recording with it and loved it. I don't know what possessed me, but I Neil has the guitar now. I sold it to him. That was guitar wise. That guitar just. Oh, it was wonderful, and uh, Neil but he won't sell it back to me. Got away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, we'll get him on the podcast, and I, and I'll guilt him into into selling it or giving it back to you one oh, way or the other. Last time, one of the times I was over at his house, he goes, "Well, I, so I, I, he brings it out, and he's like, Neil, what's going on? The strings are all kind of, you know, like he isn't cleaned, cleaned it, and I'm going, God, what have you done, it's sacrilege? <laughs> <laughs> but it's well, a great well, guitar." There's that's the one that got away. I love it. Um, is there still a favorite sort of guitar amp? Um, because so many people talk about the tones and uh, the tones of those early albums. Is there a guitar amp combination that you sort of love? You know, I wish I could recall because uh, as we started performing and, and, and doing things with, you know, with, uh, with, Bob Ezra in the studio, we went through a lot of different heads, you know, with SIR and whatnot, uh, studio instrument rentals. So I can't really tell you. At, I mean, we we were sponsored by acoustic guitar, uh, acoustic amplifiers. Yeah, the huge, that that huge three, bass amps yeah, and stuff. The yeah. bass amp with reflection, 18-inch reflection. And we, one of the times we were over at uh, acoustic, uh, I saw him in the back. I said, what are those? And he goes, oh, those are prototype. No horn. 212s, no horn. Four 12 inches. Because what was happening is we, we were playing, and they said, turn down, you're too loud, you're too loud. Well, you get to a threshold where, you know, gosh, I can't get anything happening, you know, because the horn was piercing people's ears, you know, and they're bleeding, right? right and right, uh, right, right. And it's, it's not serving us well. So when I saw those, I said, let's try those. So Glenn and I went to the 412s in the acoustic amp. Those were nice. 
even though they were solid state, they they were they were they're great because we had those. Uh, I think they were uh, the SROs that you used to be able to. If you blew one out, you could send it in. They recone the the speaker for you, free. So we were going through those a lot. But, uh, yeah. Maybe that's a bad deal if you're <laughs> for the for acoustic if you're in the Alice Cooper band because you guys must have blown up a lot of them, man. But but you know yes. there it is. That's our sound bite. That's Michael Bruce and Glenn Buxton, uh, sort of pioneers of the four twelve cabinet. How about that? Yeah, uh, love it. In a horizontal configuration. No, vertical. Excuse me. It was all vertical. So one, two, yeah, three, were, four. Okay. Yeah, it was okay. same same height. You know, like the one with the horn. They just no yeah. horns, two more speakers, and more, those more did, like a PA column. Yes, exactly, and those were uh, great. I mean, Dennis, uh, he you know that uh, he does that uh, feedback on. Uh, uh, <laughs> God, da 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 da, aching to get you that whole thing. That was that acoustic three hundred and sixty cabinet, man. It was amazing. <laughs> All right. I, I'm dedicating part two when you come back on the podcast to talking about the songs that you that you have soul writing on and that you uh, actually sang on as well. So we'll talk more about that because okay. I do want to point out that there are, are some amazing songs that, you, that just only have Michael Bruce. I know that you, you collaborated a lot with the rest of the band, but there's a couple classics that, I mean, I still love playing to this day when we do the live set. Long Way to Go is one of them. Um, I put out there, as well as the classic Be My Lover. That was all you, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, true story. <laughs> we were on one, we were on an airplane, and I'm sitting next to Grandma, you know, and and uh, she sees us come on the plane, you know, we, our hair and our clothes and whatnot. We were the last ones on. And uh, she goes, are you boys with an orchestra? And I said, well, not exactly, you know. She goes, well, what's the name of your band? Or what's the name of your orchestra? Alice Cooper. She goes, what kind of name is that? <laughs> what's said, the name of your combo? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I said, uh, listen, lady, you really wouldn't understand. You know, uh, she, oh, she asked yeah, me. Oh, yeah, there it is. You me, wouldn't understand. Yeah. Why the singer's name was Alice. I said, you know, I couldn't get into it with her. You know, she's like, what? Speak up. But a sweet lady, sweet lady. And that's where that inspiration came from. And I'm sure on that well, flight you had a drink or you know a drink, yeah, a, a drink or two or three. City and played. We came from Detroit City and played guitar and a long hair rock and roll band. I'm telling her all this, and she wants to know about Alice Cooper. And I said, "Listen, lady, you really wouldn't understand." I probably nodded off and went to sleep. But we were flying commercial lines then, and that was God, that was rug rough, rough, rough. You know, I mean, getting up, you got to be there at 8 30 in the morning. Glenn's, eyes, Glenn's eyelids are still hermetically sealed shut, you know, during that period. <laughs> we kind of guide him on. But um, that was that was brutal. But that's where the, that song is a true story. <laughs> it actually that's where happened. you cut your teeth, and that's where you're sort of like becoming a greater and greater band. So, again, I'm saving part two for those glory years of those those like classic album after classic album. The one that keeps me, you know, thank you very much. It allows me to keep touring every year with Alice and uh, also allowed me to be on stage with you guys when we uh, did the reunion tour. Yes. When you guys did the reunion tour. I was just, I just, I always say good. I just had the best I had the best seat in the house every single night because I got to sit in the well, back. And uh, yeah. 2017, if any of you were able there in the chat to uh, talk about that UK tour with the original Alice Cooper band, all the surviving members got together at the very end. And again, I was able to just basically sit back and play all these uh, great Glenn Buxton sort of riffs and classic songs and watch you guys just do your thing. How did you come up with the idea of putting a baby hand on a whammy bar? Now, hold on. Let me talk about this first okay. because I don't know how many years you've been doing this, and I don't know why I'm doing this sort of nanu nanu sort of thing. But uh, you've been using, a, I, I believe it's sort of a hybrid type of SG shaped type double cutaway type guitar and you're gonna have to tell me what kind of guitar it is but when i first started jamming with you uh 
for the reunion shows that we were doing. Yeah, I did notice that on your whammy bar, there was a baby's hand and a sort of a baby arm. So how did you come up with the idea of putting a baby hand or baby arm on the baby, whammy bar? Baby arm with hand. Yeah. Did, Vic, well, do you have a picture of that right now? I, I know Vic, our, our producer, is like, uh, he's really trying hard. He's going down the internet rabbit hole right now. But, but uh, how did that come up? And uh, what is well, it? There it is. Somewhere in there. Well, we're, that came from uh, actual real life experience. So uh, we're, we're doing, I think it was killer. And we're, you know, we do a, we do a, uh, sort of the white we call it the white set and, and the dark set the pop stuff you know at front and then we later go into dead babies right so alice is up there on the stage and he's got his sword and he's whacking these dolls you know to pieces so there's body parts laying all over the stage you know i'm waiting i'm waiting through them <laughs> and one day i just oh there's a baby's arm holding an apple the tubes uh, what do you want from life? Right? And I, got I, I got it and went, wow. So I, I, there were so many and you couldn't ignore them, you know, the shredding of baby dolls on stage. And I just picked one up and shoved it on there and it, it stuck, you know. <laughs> it was kind of, at first I thought, how sick, you know. <laughs> Uh, it, it Unfortunately, we haven't got a shot of it. We're going to find one. Every shot that Vic puts up, he doesn't have the baby's arm. And I'm going, come on, Vic. Come on, Vic. Get a baby's arm on that shot. He's throwing his hands up. Here. Do you, do well, actually, I actually have the guitar. If you got the guitar right now, folks, this will give you extra incentive to watch the video uh, and not just be listening to it on Spotify or um, Apple. He's, he's getting the guitar. So there it is. Lynn, Lynn Bruce, not only the bassist of the Michael Bruce band and a bassist extraordinaire, but also right now, guitar roadie and going to run to get the baby armed, the infamous baby armed whammy bar guitar that Kanak has asked about. Folks, we have really milked this segment of the baby arm a little too long, but it's okay, folks, because there is going to be a part two of Michael Bruce here. And again, I can't, I can't thank you enough for being on the podcast and uh, kicking off our uh, debut 2021 show. My pleasure. My pleasure. Well, um, I've got a question so, for you. What's the question, please? When we first met in Florida. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We dude. talked the whole night. It was like three or four in the morning. <laughs> like, oh, we just, do, 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 do. I was, okay, just so you know, folks, this was the this was the '90s. I was still sort of the new guy. I know the beer doesn't see it. I know that he seems like the the, the child in the band right now, but uh, but I was the new guy. I was a, a little wet behind the ears, super nervous to meet the original guitarist that basically I had learned every single of those big riffs from. And I, I think it was after the show uh, yes. in Florida. It was somewhere. Uh, we, we met at a bar and we just ended up sort of huddling together and we had a really good night and a really good moment. And it was, I'm, I'm so happy that you remember that, and man. Then, I'm, and then we moved on to another bar. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, I started getting a little foggy at. So here comes the, uh, here comes the famous guitar with the baby arm. Folks, take your screenshots right now because that is it. And if you want to see that live, you will have to come and check out Michael Bruce's uh, band that he currently has when they come out. And, uh, well, do you have plans for 2021 with the new band? There you go. I love it. I love it. Hello, Ryan Roxy here. And we know you're excited to begin the System 12 Guitar Method. And to provide you with some added incentive, we are presenting you with a challenge. The System 12 12 week guitar challenge. The entire System 12 team will be involved in helping you stay focused and stay inspired as we coach you through each System 12 lesson. Each week, we will release an insider's video that will give you goals, tips, and tricks on how to make the most out of each lesson. We will aim to create a community of encouragement and support as we will all be learning together. Do you accept the challenge? Will you make it to the 12th week? We know you will. And by the end of the challenge, you'll be playing the guitar just like you've always wanted to. Join now, prepare yourself, and let's get rolling.
because the System 12 12-week guitar challenge is coming your way. Hello folks, Roxy here. Thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, hit the subscribe button or one of the videos around me to watch more. If you'd like to, please leave a comment. If you didn't like the video, maybe you'll forget how to type.